have a message for today, but before, before I preach, I just want you to bear with me a little bit. I want to do this. A few weeks ago when the praise and worship uh, was going on, I believe the Lord spoke to me. And I felt in my spirit a need for us to cast out things from us. Jesus said, cast out the beam from your own eyes. And the beam could mean anything. Now, I know some of you have gotten delivered and healed. But there are many who are carrying loads, burdens, sicknesses, conditions. Now, after we've worshipped here this morning and praised the Lord, God is no man's debtor. He has heard us. He has seen. And he is here. And he wants to reward. He wants to. Now, let me ask you a question. You don't have to lift your hands. But those of you who are saved and born again, do you have any doubt about going to heaven? Do you? Seriously. What makes you think that after you die, that God would raise you up, resurrect you? Let's say you become a skeleton or whatever it is. What makes you think that and he will give you a new life? Do you really believe that? Very well. It is true. I'm asking you now to apply that same faith. This is what the Lord told me when Sister Candice and, and the team were, by the way, you all doing a wonderful job. And don't worry about the enemy coming against you. Um, Pastor Simon too, Minister Simon. Don't worry when the enemy comes against you. Sometimes the deliverance comes even before the preacher gets here or the prayer. But you know, while they sang last week that song about Jesus being raised from the dead. So I ask you to cast out the things that are bugging you. And I didn't feel satisfied that it was done. Some people did. And I asked you not to pray. Roll your hands on anybody and don't pray. Just apply the same faith that you are applying to be raised from the dead to go to heaven. Now, I have to apply it daily. I was attacked with cancers three times. The first two times we prayed, we fasted. Doctors couldn't find anything. I was delivered. The third time, I went into surgery. And if you know anything about prostate cancer, when they take out your prostate, there's a lot of complications that come after that. And I'm not afraid. I have issues that I'm dealing with. But I know my Redeemer lives. Amen. And if you can raise me from the dead, I know. <laughs> I was going to say you can raise everything else. But anyhow, God is able to do all things. You see me going to the bathroom regularly because the bladder is weak. But he has strengthened it and the manifestation will come. He reminds me about Abraham that he, uh, that, 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 that he told Abraham he was, he was going to have a child at 75 years old. Brother Z, I have to stop that, you know. <laughs> 75 years old. And it wasn't until he was about 100 years old. And the Lord showed me that. So when you pray now, I know you've prayed already, but... Do an extra prayer for yourself now. You're going to ask God to deliver you from whatever it is, totally. And when you pray, apply the faith that you apply for salvation. Think about that. And the Bible says when you ask, believe that you have it and you shall have it. I want you now, two things we're going to do before I preach. You're going to ask your loving Heavenly Father in the name of His Son because of what He has put on His Son for you. You're going to ask Him to remove, take away from you everything that you know should not be there. Let me tell you something. There is nothing in heaven or in Christ that belongs to the fallen state of man. The fallen state, sickness, diseases, poverty, 
They all came because of sin. And Jesus Christ was manifested to take away the sin. And with the blood of Christ, we are redeemed, restored. So I want you to remember this now as you pray. Bow your heads. Ask your father in the name of the, his son, Jesus Christ, to take away whatever it is that is bugging you. Don't leave anything back. First of all, cast away your own self. Sometimes your mind, your mind is telling you things. Don't follow your mind. Follow your heart. There's a difference. Forget the mind. Let the mind wander. The heart says, God can, God will. Pastor was talking about you know, to tell God how much we love him. We have to also know that he loves us even more. So pray now. A couple of minutes. Whatever it is. In the name of Jesus, tell him to take it away. Just how you prayed for salvation. You came up here and you accepted Christ. And you never went back. Ask him now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, take it away, all of it, because of what he put on his son. Praise God. Praise God. Okay, it doesn't take a long prayer. Now, I want you to do this. The Bible says cast out. The Bible says that you have authority over all the works of the enemy. All. Therefore, I want you to tell whatever it is that you have prayed in your own words. He, she, or it has no more rights with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, tell it to go, come out, leave. Just go. Leave me alone. Just go in Jesus' name. Cast it out. If Jesus wants you to cast out the beam from your eye, and that's a big deal. He's talking about conditions in your life. If he wants you to do that, that means he has given you the ability to do it. He has also given you the ability to cast out the sickness or the pain or the condition that is bothering you. You now cast it out in the name of Jesus. Take authority over it in Jesus' name. Do that right now. By yourself. Cast it out. Cast it out. Cast it out. And while we are in this mood or mode, I want to speak to the pain in Pastor Mickey's shoulder. I'm not speaking to Pastor Mickey. I'm speaking to you pain, you disease, whatever it is that's bugging Pastor Mickey. In the name of Yeshua, the Son of God, by the power of the Holy Ghost and the blood of Jesus, we the church say to you, come out from Pastor Mickey and go. In the name of Jesus Christ, as Joshua spoke to the sun and the moon from earth to heaven, we are speaking to the pain and the issue in Pastor Mickey's shoulder. Come out. Come out. In the name of Jesus. Oh, shoulder. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, we, the church, said to you, be healed. Be healed. In Jesus' name. And I said to all of you, Whatever issues that you have, you have been made whole by the stripe of the Son of God. Therefore, be whole, be healed, be delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, what I want you to do from now on is to simply say every time you get up, every time you move, every time you feel a pain, every time you feel a condition, Say, Father, thank you for healing me. No, I'm not telling you things that I have not done. I'm going to say it again. I had pains in my feet. Uh, uh, something like an abscess under my foot. I get up in the morning and I'm limping and I'm saying, Lord, thank you for healing me. In the limp, thank you for healing me. 
Well, it is gone. All the pains have gone. Because you have thanked God. He has done it. So that's what you say now. Don't pray anymore. Just tell him, thank you. And believe. Thank you for taking away this burden. Thank you for paying off all my debts and all my bills. Thank you. Tell him thanks. Every day. Thank you for taking care of that situation. Don't fail to give him thanks. Now, you know, there's a commercial that I see. You might have seen it. Where this little baby or something is in a stroller. The baby's in a stroller. And the baby says something and his mother and his aunt is standing there. The baby says, liberty. And the mother got excited. Oh, his first word, first word. Say, say, mama. The baby says, liberty. And the aunt comes and says, say, auntie. The baby says, liberty. Well, I want you to say, I'm healed. You feel sick? I'm healed. Thank you, God, for healing me. Thank you, God, for delivering me. Thank you, God, for paying my bills and making me debt free. I'm serious, saints, as I stand here today. And if the Lord will reveal, because sometimes there are some things that are blocking you from your deliverance. Again, I'm talking experience. The Lord will reveal to you what it is. You know, when he reveals it to you, you take care of it. I had to take care of a few things. Another thing is sometimes our pride sometimes, you know. The Bible says God resists the proud. He gives grace to the humble. So ask him if there is something that's blocking him. But he has healed you. He has heard you. Okay? Thank God. Well, I have a message for today. And um, I want to say before I, 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 I preach, I want to really give a compliment to Pastor Omar. Pastor Ma is the strangest person I've met. Wonderful man. Pastor Ma has to balance the culture of this church, the nature of people, the spirits of minds. He has to balance things. And I know sometimes it's difficult for him. I mean, look how he has black people wearing African clothes. He himself dressed like that. There are many ministers that wouldn't do that. Now, personally for me, I really don't care. Period. Because you know I'm black. <laughs> but Pastor Ma will take the time and the interest and the effort. And he stands here boldly without even making an excuse. You know? And I want to give, I want to compliment him. He tries to keep the church balanced. And if you have an issue... Talk to him, man. You might see people doing, I, I, I have to talk to, uh, about Sister Kimbrough. Sister Barbara Kimbrough. How she pulled the children together and made such a beautiful little children's choir. And I know maybe some people might be wondering, well, you know, all the while I'm here, you know. Well, look, if you have an, if you have an idea or a thought, talk to pastor about it. He would let you do it if it is good, if it is right. He gives people chances. You know what I'm saying? He's taking a lot of chance with me. Sometimes I, I, I scare my own self. And he will take chances with you if it is good. So talk to him. Don't feel badly. Don't, don't, and if somebody rub you wrong, in the, you see this church, by the way, I want to talk to you this morning about love. Last week, Sister Eutrus preached and she mentioned love. And I said, wow, she hit the nail on the head. And then when Pastor Dominic came, he, 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 he zeroed in on the word love again. Love. And when Pastor asked me to preach today, I had a different message that I wanted to preach. And I think the Lord has given me this message instead. Now, this is Black History Month. And as Pastor was going through all of the wonderful things that black people have done. I just want to praise God for all people. It shows you the goodness of God. It shows you how good God is. We should learn from the goodness of God. You know, that, uh, you know, you know, as the Bible says, that God has made of one blood 
all nations to live on the earth. And the goodness of God is to help us to love each other. It is human, it's our own human spirits and cultures that are causing all the problems that we're having. But anytime anybody, anyone, any race will rise up and do what is good, they would see the reward and the, and the results and the benefits. So nobody is below anybody. And this is what we have to cherish. The goodness of God, the blood of Christ is red for everybody. So um, I asked my wife, I said, why should they have Black History Month? Because I'm not much into that sort of thing. She said, well, it's because, you know, the, the history of the blacks were not in the, in the books like normal, you know, normal history. A lot of her history, she says to me, she teaches me, you know. The history uh, was not in the books, and so we have to have a consciousness of black history. I say, okay, all right, well, you know, and I, I, I could understand that. But anyhow, the love of God has transcended and overpowered all nations, all races, all cultures. And if we, as the church of God, would love, we wouldn't have to worry about all of this thing. You look beautiful. You look wonderful. But love, love is the driving force. Love is the power. Love is the weapon that God has given us. And so this morning, I want to talk to you. My topic is follow the leader. And the theme is how to do the greatest thing. Now, I'm going to take or rather start reading, I'll be more or less reading um, the message. In Mark chapter 12, verses 29, 30, and 31, you know, a scribe, one of the scribes had asked Jesus, trying to catch him, what is the greatest commandment of all? Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. He says, this is the first commandment. And Mark 12, 31. And the second is like, Namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. He said, there is none other commandment greater than these. Think how easy it is. How easy it is. We know how easy it is to love the Lord. We know that. But it is also easy to love your neighbor as yourself. And one of the smart ones, you know, trying to interfere with Jesus further, he asked Jesus, well, who is my neighbor? But before I get to that, the command to love, I want to read what, what I wrote, I, I don't want to get carried away. The command to love both God and man is the greatest commandment, Right? Then we hear Jesus himself actually saying in John 15, 12, you could get out your Bibles and your phone and you could find these scriptures. I didn't give them everything there. John 15, 12, he says, Jesus says, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Now mark the words, I have loved, as I have loved you. He gave us all his love, his entire being. The Bible says in him, in Christ, was the fullness of the Godhead in bodily form. He gave everything. Are we willing to follow his lead? Are we willing to love another race, another person, another being? Are we willing to love? Now, I know that there's a lot of love in this church. I know it, and I'm not being hypocritical. I have never been loved as I have been loved in this church in my whole life. I'm talking about outside of my wife and my family. In my whole life, 
I've received love here, and there's a lot, a lot of love in this church. And if you, again, if you have a little problem, it might be with one person or two, you know, but generally speaking, a lot of love. I've seen more love in this church than I've seen anywhere else. Again, I had to come back to pastor. Ma, I was walking across there with my lace untied. He bent down and he tied my lace. He taught me something. So whenever I see children running around with their lace untied, I will bend down and tie their lace. I was tying somebody's lace there. I can't remember who it was, a big man, and he told me, I said, no, no, let me do this. Pastor Dominic this morning showed me how to wear my vest. He said, don't button. I had everything buttoned down like a old man. He said, don't button everything. He said, leave this one. <laughs> I mean, we, I'm getting it every which way. I, I, I can't tell you what, but, what, 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 what but the Z has done uh, for me. Because he wouldn't want me to say that. But, what I'm telling, but besides that, generally, all of you, all of you, if I'm going to call names, then I'm going to leave out some people. But I've seen love. I've received love. You are a loving group of people. So what I want to encourage you now is to love each other more, and especially to love on the outside. Let your love spring forth from the church to the outside. So my message today is about love. Follow the leader. Jesus Christ is the leader. And the greatest work that can be done, he says, is love. Now, faith is good, but Paul says in Galatians 5, 6 that Although faith avails much, faith works by love. Could it be that some of the things that we are not getting through is because we are failing to love? Huh? Could it be that some of the problems we are having is because of a failure to love? That you have to forgive whoever it is that hurt you? Some people are hurt from small when I was little, the school teacher beat you up. That's serious. Or somebody interfered with you. And there's a lot of hatred, I mean, naturally, and it's okay. You're hurting. But when you forgive and you give up all of these things and you love, you love, you love. The Bible says, faith works by love. So make a decision today to love. Let us, this love that we have here, let us bring it out into the open. So they, the scribe asked Jesus, so who is my neighbor? And Jesus gave him a story. You know the, the story about a good Samaritan, a man, a Jewish man, got beaten up, robbed and beaten up and left on the side of the road. And Jesus said, a Levite Okay, no, a priest passed by, which is a Jewish priest, his own clan, his own people passed by. Pass on the other side. A Levite is coming down the road, and he goes to see what's happening, and leaves the man there, and walks away on the other side. But the Bible says in Luke 10, 33 to 35, if you have your phone, if you have the Bible, you can follow he says, but a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, he came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. That is what we need for the outside and even within us here sometimes. And went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast. And brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow... When he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto them, Take care of him, and whatsoever you spend more, when I come again, I will repay thee. That is how we're supposed to love. This guy was a Samaritan doing that to a Jew. And if you know the story, the Jews had no dealings with the Samaritan. They were enemies. They were enemies. So who is your enemy this morning? You have none. You see, Jesus Christ came to bring light 
to this world. Before him, there was not the light that there is. And you have that light. We are that light. And therefore, we have to shine that light. Who is your enemy today? We're going to continue reading. Again, I didn't give them this, but uh, you get it. Luke 6, 27. You can follow me as I read. Now, Jesus is speaking. You know, I believe that we have had a lot of word and a lot of word of power and faith and positive words and stuff like that, but I believe we kind of have forgotten the commandment to love. We love, you know, but you know, it, we, we, we do not take it as a commandment, as a must thing. And the Lord has put upon me a sort of a deep concern for the church at large, the general church, not only deeper life. I feel for the body of Christ everywhere. And sometimes I feel as if Papa God is crying when we see how we are dealing with maybe not our people in here, but maybe people from the outside. Anyhow, let us read. Luke, I'll get to that just now. Luke 6, 27 and 28. Jesus said, But I say unto you which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you. That's a good thing for black people who are hated by other people. That's a good, 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 good prescription. Do good. Forget the hate. We hate one another too. We even hate ourselves. So hate is there. Hate is in the world. Forget the hate. Bring in love. He says, bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you. Jesus is going the opposite way. This is the word of the master. Follow the leader. He is who you follow. Not your politicians, not even your school teachers, not even some of your preachers and pastors. If they are instilling in you an attitude of hate or dislike, follow the leader. So Jesus is going the opposite way. And in Luke, and in uh, chapter, um, chapter 6, verses 30 and 31, he says here, Give to every man that asks of you, and of him that takes away your goods, don't ask it for them again. And this is the part, verse 31 in chapter 6. As you would that men should do to you, do also to them likewise. This is our leader. He is who we follow. And we could never go wrong. Never. Now he continues in verse 37 of chapter 6. He says, Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. You see this right here? God is merciful. You go back in the Old Testament, and you see a lot of judgments and all that sort of thing, but you see a lot of God's mercy. The biggest example of God's mercy is um, King um, Hezekiah's son, um, Manasseh. The Bible said Manasseh was a wicked king. He caused Israel to sin Terribly, terribly. But when Manasseh turned to God, God had mercy on him and God forgave him. God always showed mercy to Israel. But you know, a lot of times, I don't want to song, you know, because I love Israel. I believe, I thank God for Israel. I thank God as Jesus Christ came through Israel. And I think we should support Israel, period. But you know, in the Old Testament, I look at a man like David. And David had a, had a fellow who cursed him. When David was running away from his son Absalom, and this man got on the side of the road, and he cursed David real good. He didn't know that David was going to come back. David came back to the throne, and this guy came to David, and he said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I cursed you, you know, blah, blah, blah. And David said to him, it's okay, don't worry. I'll let you live. But look what David did. I don't have time to go into the scripture. When David was old and dying, and he left, his son, um, Absalom, Solomon, Solomon. He said the guy named 
uh, Shimei, I think. He said, you see this guy? Don't let his gray hair go down with all blood. Ah, don't hold him guiltless. Deal with him. That is a kind of a mentality that the old folks had in the old days, not during Jesus. And God is not like that. God has forgiven them many, many times. But I'm talking about the difference between the light that we have now in Christ and living under the legal system. So here now, where are we? I think 636. Be therefore merciful. That's right. Okay, and the, uh, verse 37, he says, Judge not, and you shall not be judged. He says, Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. Now, judge not, you shall not be judged. Condemn not, you shall not be condemned. In my years growing up as a Pentecostal, there were many condemnations um, in our denominations. We condemned the Catholics, we condemned the Jehovah's Witnesses, we condemned the Adventists, we condemn, we condemn. I don't condemn anymore. I don't, I don't, God knows. God knows every man's heart. You know what I'm saying? And there's error and truth in every denomination, everything. I'm not talking about outside of Christ now. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Only through him can there be salvation. But we got to watch our spirits of condemning people who call Jehovah God and who call Jesus Christ the Son. We, we got to be very careful. He says, do not condemn. Now, I, a sister heard me speak about that before. I always speak about that. And she pulled me up. She said, Jerry, Brother Jerry, she says, you say don't condemn, but you talk about, against certain preachers and ministers. Well, hear me. I'm going to say it very boldly. I do not speak against ministries. You know what bugs me? What bothers me is how the church would pull over on one side and stay there. And see all the faults on one side. And would not see the fault on the other side. I was in Brooklyn preaching, and I said to the people, everyone knows that God is not a Democrat. And everybody, yeah, no, that is clear. You can't, fool, you can't fool anybody with that. But you know, a lot of people don't know he's not a Republican either. That is the problem. Oh, by the way, I, I am an NPA, no party affiliation. I'm, I'm a member of the kingdom of God. You see, I'm not wearing any fancy clothes. I'm a child of God. And I think that the church, we have to stop condemning. We have to follow Jesus. When a person tells you something, whatever it is, check it out in the Bible. How would Jesus react to this? What will Jesus say? You remember the woman caught in adultery? They had her. Right, they caught her in the act. She had no way out. My God, that was it. Death. And Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. And he gives her a warning. Go and sin no more. And since we have to practice the love of Jesus Christ. So judge not, he says. Judge not. Let us love rather than judge. Huh? Let us love rather than judge. Let us the love that we have in here, we love this church. We love our, our pastors, loving, we love each other. Let us bring that love out. You know, I look at all the issues that people are dealing with these days. You see the gays and the lesbians and all of that stuff? If you know sometimes how my heart burns me. I saw a young man that came in an elevator one day, and I'm going to finish now. And I look at him, and he's like a real girl. No, this is not, and I say, Lord, where, where, where is his daddy? Where is his father? You know, that's just who he is. And some of them being um, abused as children. A lot of stuff happening. We don't even know. We can't, we, we, we just say things, and I cannot stand it sometimes. Where is the love of Jesus Christ? Where is the cry for the unsafe, for the ungodly? Where is the prayer? Where is the prayer for those who, you know, even those who hate? I ask God to go in among them. 
All the people, all the, hate, the, the, the haters that say, God, go in among them and pull out some souls and make them Pauls. Go in among the gays, the lesbians, the transgenders. Go in among them and pull out some of them. Make them ministers. Pray for them. Pray for them. That is our job. Not to condemn, not to criticize, and not to take sides, but the sides of the cross of Jesus and the kingdom of God. And one thing I want to say, since we celebrate in Black History Month, you know, parents, help your children. Help your children to love, to understand, to go into school and show love. Help your children to love. Hear me now. You see the police? I know it's hard sometimes. And we have some bad ones. But we have bad people everywhere. You have bad priests, bad preachers, bad church. Don't worry about those that are not behaving themselves. You know, don't use the bad to criticize and condemn the good. Amen. I look at them again and my heart goes out. When you, if your cat go on your roof, you can't get him now. You're calling the, the, the cops. Everything you're calling the police. And yes, we want to, you know, we have to love them. Teach your children. Now, my father was a police way back and I know what police children suffer. They have families too, brothers and sisters. They need to go home to their families. Teach your children to respect them. Teach them. Teach them to help their peers to respect them. When the bad ones we are, God is going to deal with them. God is going to deal with the wicked. Don't worry about the wicked. No, don't think I stand up here and I've never been affected by them. I was in my window one night. My son called me, Dad, I'm coming home. And I stood in my window there waiting for my son. I don't know for how long, hours. Couldn't see him come. When he came, I said, what happened, son? He said, well, the police stopped me, you know. He searched the car. He searched me. He searched, he searched, he searched. Well, thank God he couldn't find anything, you know. So what I'm saying is it's not that I have not experienced things like that. You understand me? But I'm saying that we have to elevate the good. We have to elevate the good. There are many wonderful, good ones out there doing their jobs and protecting us. And I talk about the police because I know this is a major issue that has, you know, taken place in the past couple of years or so, you know, with George Floyd and all of that. You know, so we, 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 we have to talk about these things in reality. Talk to your children. Cause them to love. Now, again, I say there's no doubt that I am black. You know that. Some people... <laughs> One time I got a Spanish guy mad. He couldn't speak English. All he knew was black. <laughs> so they use it as a curse word. They use it. And it's okay. Like in the 60s, you know, guys used to walk around, I'm black and proud. And I used to say, no, you lie. You're scared. There's nothing to be proud about. There's no, no race to be so proud. God has made out of one blood all men. To dwell on this earth. And if you serve God, show the world. You be an example to the world. I'm going to finish now. I was in, in um, the dollar store. That's my Macy's, you know. <laughs> and uh, this white guy came in. And he's so excited about the prices. Wow, he said, you guys doing well. So he asked the, 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 the cashier, he said, um, are these things um, two for a dollar? He said, yeah. He said, wow, good. I'm glad because there are four people that I want to do good to. Yeah? He said, there are four people that I want to do something good for in the dollar store. Two for a dollar. When I saw that, my heart, I felt it for him. I, it, it didn't matter that he was a, a Caucasian. You know what I'm saying? But he was poor and he wanted to do good for somebody in the dollar store. He is happy because he gets two for a dollar. My God, where is our love? Where is our feeling, man? Where is the spirit of God and the spirit of Christ? And I remember some, maybe some of you, when the riots were going on, you looked only at the riots and the burning and, and the looting. That's all you looked at. And you failed to hear a man dying on the street calling for his mother. You failed. You failed to raise a voice. Certainly the rioting is wrong. Certainly the looting is wrong. But goods can be re restored and buildings can be built. But when a man is dying and maybe he's going to hell, where is your love? Where is 
you're consumed. If I do nothing this morning, saints, is to get us to become conscious of the need to love, to love over and above what we have experienced and what we have practiced. Pastor Dominic, loving man, God bless you.